swear words anymore. Neil uh, Buxton here, and uh, no, not Neil Buxton. Neil Buxton. I'm, okay, take two. <laughs> <laughs> you're you're going to have to become Neil. That's all there is. <clears throat> He's called you Neil. John Buxton. Buxton here, who is suffering from a cold. <clears throat> And Neil uh, Redman yeah, here, suffering. who created the clothing so that he's going to be wearing. Uh, we're going through some of Neil's uh, reenactment uh, crap. Check, check out the Guinness stuff. Oh, yeah. you got to get that on there. Guinness is good. <laughs> anyway, uh, he's got his tri corner hat over there, which I'm told by him would not have been brown. It would have been black or gray or something like that, but not a brown color. What are you talking about the tri -corner? Yeah. And, uh, yeah. The but, most common were black. Yeah, and you can get away with other stuff. And if you start looking at po paintings and portraits and stuff, you can get away. But there again, see that's finery. Yeah. So anyway, we don't want to interpret. So we're just picking up, uh, going What's through his pants. Thing? Hey, show us the ragged pants that you had—the uh, pantaloons or what do you call those things? Knee breeches. Pantaloons. Yeah, my pantaloons. My his panties. Pan his panties. His panties. Where the hell are the Where'd you put your panties, John? I have them on, dear. Okay. But look at the, how ragged those things are. Well, if you if you wear them, you know that's what the knee's going to blow out. Yeah. Those are mine. The rest of <laughs> those are Druid's oak. They are. They absolutely are. And he ripped Where'd the you crap. Put them in my pants. Yeah. He would, would. You made them for me years and years ago. Good God. Do you recognize them seriously? Yes, I can tell just down here. The, the knees are blown out in them and. There. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, stuff like that, but... Uh, yeah, no. Well, then, who made these? Definitely not you, right? Um, no. I know who made them, you don't. No, those aren't mine. No. I don't know who made them either, but no, they're not. definitely not mine. But they fit great. Yeah. Actually, that looks great. I like the uh, way they flare at the bottom. <laughs> they're, they're, they're bell knee. Well, they're called uh, X navy rejects. <laughs> bell, bell <laughs> so anyway, we're going through that. Now, he's got his moccasins he's going to wear here in the leggings. And uh, so we'll pick this up uh, when he gets dressed. Go ahead. All right, these are what you might call utilitarian Native American sewn pucker toe moccasins, all right? Now, this is Eastern, yeah. Yeah, we, yeah we are. everything we're talking is Eastern. Now, this would be, and remember, this is a child size, okay? This is what you call the Ligonier moccasin. It's a center seam. It has a basic sole on it. These were dug up at Fort Ligonier. So we know the time period and everything is correct. So if you want to, without getting in trouble, say that this is a native moccasin, this is a white man's moccasin or whatever you could. Yeah. So, you know, if you want to put Lovewell in this moccasin, it's it would be it's it, it's correct, we think. Yeah. Now, admittedly, Maine is a long way from Fort Ligonier. Yeah. And Fort Ligonier was a lot later than 1725. Right. But we don't know, well, hell, moccasins were in Europe, for Pete's sake, you know, versions of moccasins anyway. But, you know, if this is more fun for you to do, that actually, That actually shows you know, uh, uh, better in bronze than that does. Probably would, yeah. Yeah, that that is, is more uh, what you see in old bronzes and stuff like that mm -hmm. of Indians. And, stuff and then, like of that. course, you've got the other, you know, the buckle shoes, if you want to see them in your video. Yeah. Ah. Okay. All right, so basically... Buckle shoes, and these have been worn quite a bit. They're mine. They would have been used also. Yeah. And these would have been, you know, not a right nor left. These are straight last. In other words, the same on both sides. But right. But by the time you wear them, they tend they to, tend to take the they'll shape, take the shape your of your foot. foot. Yeah. But these were worn by Native Americans and whites and everything else. So mm -hmm. there's a good possibility that Lovewell's militia group could have could have worn this. I'd say probably. Hell, maybe ninety percent of them. Well, you know, the thing is, they carried moccasins with them to replace the moccasins they wore out. Mm -hmm. I would think they'd probably wear something that was a little more permanent. Anything you do would probably be correct. Yeah. And nobody is gonna. I, I actually, think. I actually like the uh, the uh, buckle. Well, the buckles are neat to do. Yeah. yeah. And then you've got different styles of buckles. These are the more common cheap man buckle. You know, you get if you see it sort. And I got those over here somewhere too. The fancy buckles and. Silver or blah 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 or what the heck ever, and better looking buckle shoes. Yeah, those I wear when I wear my wig and all that kind of thing. Right. But anyway, you know, you've got three choices at least, and then you can get into, as you know, but the Western stuff, they start to do these, and then they start to put the thing over the Bam. shapes, you know, with the whatnot in here too. Mm -hmm. But that's not utilitarian. Yeah. If you, why would you spend the time to? No, you're going to wear out? something that's not going to. Yeah. Now, gonna, you have to if you were going to go to some kind of dance or something, you'd probably dress them up a little bit. Well, sure. That's, that's the problem with the research on historical stuff. A lot of the stuff that's there 
is presentation stuff yeah. or you know the better quality stuff so right anyway you got all I that? think I'm going to stick with the moccasins on this one only because yeah, because it's fun to paint these I'd rather paint these than these two then the, yeah yeah you know, same kind of thing now the other and, thing see all this is an artistic uh, point of view guys out there oh, sure. you can change things a little bit as long as it's historically correct it doesn't matter this is another choice for what you want to put on Captain Lovewell this is a ammo pouch or whatever you want to call it yeah and I tended to put one on the painting that was a belly box. Well, the historian said, whoa, you know, don't use a belly box in 1725. But you could have used a, this type of ammo box, which are, you know, for me is a little bit too long. Yeah, see, I, th I think I'd here. prefer to go with the uh, pouch. With this? For, no, your pouch. Oh, that, yeah, and that's the other possibility. Yeah. Which is, if you want to see it for yeah. your video, is... Yeah. Now, what would they carry in that pouch? Whatever the hell you needed. <laughs> yeah. You know, patches uh, and all right. Balls. I don't even know what I got in mind at this point. You know, bullet starter. You got, you know, whatever it is you you feel like you want to take in here. You may have some shot. You may have more. You know, patches. You may have uh, tobacco, <laughs> flints, uh, Stri striker, condoms. Oh no, scratch. <laughs> No condoms. Yeah, no condoms. <laughs> they, they'd be real goat Just skin. Just Buxton clowning around again. I don't even know what all I got in here right now. But basically, you know, whatever you felt you needed, and you need to cut it down to bare minimum. Yeah. So, and you really don't need that. But, you know, it's good to have in case you need it. And then you got the worms and the screws that's probably in your musket. Yeah. So. And by the way, there's a difference between a rifle and a musket. Musket right. smooth bore, and a rifle is a no, rifle. Not necessarily. You guys will get you on that. A musket is meant to be military designation. Usually it was a smooth bore, like the brown vest and stuff. But when you get to the guys that are really into the old stuff and whatnot and you call something a musket, uh uh. It could even be called a smooth bore rifle, which is okay. kind of you know, contradictory. But it's basically a flintlock or a muzzle loader, it's either a smooth smooth bore or a rifled. Okay? Okay. Most of the trade guns, especially early, were smooth bore. So that's why we were. I was suggesting that you use the one, one of those ones in the book for yeah, the whole. yeah. So and the other thing too was if you were making a living out on the frontier or whatever, you're going to get more game with a musket than you would with a rifle because smooth bore. Again, yeah, yeah, because uh, with a smooth bore you can do shot, you can do ball, you can do both, mm -hmm. but with a rifle you're stuck with a ball. Mm. You have a button right here. Okay. okay, John's getting dressed up here. Ain't not cute? Those are his leggings. Leather leggings. I think they look cool as hell. I gotta get pictures of you before we put the, the, the vest on there. It's nice. Is this flat or turned? Uh, it feels, looks, yeah, there we go. There we go. And it would be that close to you, right? Yeah, that's oh, to yeah. keep it out of the way. It, it keeps okay. it see, all you have to and it wouldn't down. rattle either. Yeah. No, and see, a lot of guys wear them down here. And you see them in the movies. They're way down here. Yeah. And they just don't work. But they would rattle you know, and they would the give away your away. position, yeah. You want to put this on the other side or the same side? Uh, what side do you think? Usually they, either they wore me the way. Let's do it on the same side. All right. Okay. This pull the pad. Yeah, pull that out. Get your... Is that good? Yeah, it looks nice. Okay. And this is your patch knife. I mean, yeah. They were just like Neil uses for his right. steaks. So let's lift your arm up. Let me see how that looks. Oh, yeah, that looks good. And see, that looks comfortable there that, that way, well, yeah, too. It, it can't be down here because... Well, it, and if you're crossing streams, you don't want well, uh, that getting too. wet either. Not only that, but the forest and everything were so thick with brush yeah. that everything was grabbing at you. And you want it tight to your you body, could, yeah. Yeah. But you didn't want it rattling a lot because if it rattled, then you're giving away your position. Well, if you, like the guys that do this all the time, I don't anymore because I'm too old, but you know, if you're out a whole weekend or a week or whatever some of these guys do, you find out what works and what doesn't. Yeah. And if you start out with it down here, pretty soon you're going to start tying knots into this thing right. to get it up out of the way. Uh, uh, this is another thing that changed through the years. This is the 1720s or what the heck ever with the big cuffs and they kept making them smaller and smaller and then they started making, what, what were they called, the cut off uniforms or... Yeah whatever the hell they were called. 
See, if you, I'm recording this, I'm going to sound like the biggest dummy because I asked you the question. <laughs> Could you turn around and, and show us, show me the uh, construction of the uh, back part of his, uh, uh, bottom part of his jacket so I know that for when I sculpt it. <laughs> How's that? Well, no, 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 just, no, just stand there. I want him to explain the back part. Uh, there's nothing to explain. Just turn around. Okay, that's split right there, an overlap. You split in the back, and then you have your... Okay, you got extra material there that are buttons, so you can unbutton it for a sword. Right. Or horseback, is it this, this work on Well, horseback, back, your split would be for that. Yeah. In the middle, yeah. And then the pockets are a certain distance from the bottom and all that crap. Yep. Now, what, when you would see artwork, especially in that time period, they accentuated only on the this kind of stuff. Only on the dress stuff. Yeah. And what they did was they would actually starch the coat so that it would be very stiff. They used the, Oh, is that right? And even the silk coats they used stiffened silk. And uh and horse bar. Horse bar. Well, Just I, to make it hang right. Right. What I did when I did the painting to give the look that someone would understand is I flared them. Okay. More than Right. If you wore this thing out in the field, it's going to hang, all right? right. It's going to get wet, it's going to get... But to have the look that I was looking for, 1725s, you got a headache already? No, no, I'm just going to say put it on your head now. It's going to be way too big for him. It's yeah. going to come down to his nose. I'm, I'm getting ready to steam him right here. I don't think this is a big deal. So what's he, what he's doing right now is steaming um, his hat. I got mine steamed over. Show me with my hat. Mm -hmm. Just point it? Yeah. I got my hat on. I've got it steamed and it fits my head perfectly now. Thanks. Smile and look pretty now. And who was uh, it that okay, told well, me? Okay, well, don't, never mind. <laughs> who was it that told me it wouldn't fit? Huh? Who was it that told me it wouldn't fit? Oh, I didn't say that. He yes, said you it. Did. No, you did. No, you I, said, I, I never, I never say things like that. Yeah. I say all kind of stuff I shouldn't say. I don't say things like that. Never. Oh, there's this one. This is my size. Now that's my oh, story and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> He just wants you to put this hat on for now. John, you look good in that outfit. Now, uh, Captain John Lovewell what, was in his 30s. What are you doing tonight? And he... Yeah. Oh, oh, God. Hi, Sailor. New in town. Hey, Sailor. <laughs> anyway, uh, Captain John Lovewell was in his 30s, and obviously John Buxton isn't. Well, you can flip it around. I'm uh, 37 if you flip it around backwards. Yeah. 73. So anyway, uh, it doesn't matter because uh, he's got the right body shape and stuff like that, and uh, it's going to all work out just fine. Screw it around where you're comfortable with it. Figure out how to use it. What we're doing right now, I've taken my pictures, and Neil's getting some pictures taken of him for painting that he wants to do. Well, maybe. I'm just shooting reference. And the, yeah. uh, this button here to shoot. Yep. Mm -hmm. But, he, you know, as an artist, he also does reference, too. So yeah. this is basically what he's Figure doing. Figure it out, and then I'll get in some poses once you get the camera figured out there. All right? I'm just trying to get you in focus. Yeah, it does it automatically. Oh, it does it? Yeah, you preview the button. Push the button just a tiny bit, and it'll focus. Okay, got it. You see? Okay. All right. Doesn't that look? Feel, feel that, he looks so cool in that outfit, though. Yeah. Thank you, dear. Yes. You ready? All right. That's going to do it for today. I'll put the photographs up in the uh, video that I took today, and uh, and that's going to be it for uh, this Sunday, uh, the twenty second, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. All right. Are you taking January. some already, or what? Yeah. Okay. All right. And I'll see you tomorrow in Gettysburg.